So we're going to be talking about sand key diagrams and efficiency and energy. And I like this one here, infinite energy explained. And if you can't read it, well, it's cat always lands on her feet. But bread with butter always falls on the butter side down. So, of course, fasten the bread with butter to the cat's back. The cat will keep rotating and never fall on the ground. Now, like this, then you attach the cat bread to the generator. That looks painful. And it'll spin around infinite energy. That's a bit ridiculous. So what's a sand key diagram? These are these diagrams that show something about energy or it could be power, but the width of the arrows is the power or energy. That's what it means here. So on the left side, this piece right here, that represents like the energy in, for example, or it could be the power in, like the input. This right here, this top one here is usually the useful energy out in this case right here. So this is like what you actually get out of it. And down here, this is like everything else that gets uh, tossed away, it's losses. So this could be due to heat, you know, due to friction or whatever else. So whatever else causes a loss of energy. So this is sort of how we do it. And then the size of this and the size of this right here and then the size of this one right here, like the width of these arrows, those will have numbers to them. And so that's how you would then use those to calculate something. So we have an equation for efficiency, and we're going to use this Greek symbol eta for it. And it's going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be the useful work out divided by the total work in, or it's going to be the useful power out over the total power in. And this is not something you have to memorize because it's in your data booklet. Okay, and remember that eta here, that's the efficiency, and we can either write it uh, like, you know, because uh, it's a decimal between 0 and 1, or you can also just do it as a percent. So if you get like, you know, 0 0.5, that means that it's 50% uh, efficient, and so on. So let's do an example. So we have a power plant, and we're told that it has the following sand key diagram here. So we're talking about power in this case. So useful power out is over here, and it's 6 megawatts. We have the losses are 14 megawatts. We don't know how much is in, but maybe we can actually figure that out. Can you see? We can actually figure that out. If we want to figure that out, let's see. How do we do this one right here? Well, this one right here can just be, well, 6 plus 14, then. That's going to be... What we're going to get here. So in other words, this is just going to be 20 megawatts. So that's kind of nice. So the question is, what's the efficiency? And that means then we can go back and use that equation. And if we want power, at least, then we should write out an equation for the efficiency right here. And it's uh, we're using power, we're using watts. So we want to say it's the useful power out divided by the total power in. Okay, so that means in our case, then the efficiency will just be, let's see, the useful power out is 6 megawatts. Uh, divide that by the total in, which is this 20 that we just found. And good news, the megawatts all cancel out. They're supposed to, right? It's just a number. So we have just 6 over 20. And I can use my calculator for that, in case you don't know. Uh, it's just going to be 0.3, I think. Yeah. So it's going to be, if I go up and ask my calculator to do it like this right here, say, please give me the answer. Oops. There we go. So it's 0.3. So I can say, therefore, it is 0 0.3. Whoops. Um, that'll be the answer there. So we can say then the efficiency, and I'll just put down 0 0.3. That means the efficiency is you could either say it's 0 0.3 or you could say that's 30%. So you could say it's, you know, 30% efficient. Uh, that doesn't sound terribly efficient, but it's actually not bad. I mean, because uh, you, you can't have something that's totally efficient. That's something, you know, from thermodynamics, for example, that there's no, you know, efficient, uh, you know, 100% efficient um, heat pumps or anything like that. But in this case right here, this one happens to be 30% efficient. Okay, so now let's talk about energy density. So the energy density is defined as the amount of energy released by one meter cubed of fuel. So in other words, it's energy over a volume. And that's why this one right here, I think, is really important. In case you need it, you should probably try to memorize it. And we're going to put maybe units on it. So this one here, energy released, that'll be in joules. And this one here, volume of fuel used, will be in meters cubed. So in other words, the answer should be joules per meters cubed. And this one here is probably worth memorizing. This is, I think, a good one to put into your brain. That's the energy density. Now, different sources of fuel have different energy densities. If we do it in gigajoules per meter cubed, you can see, for example, gasoline is 35. Okay, coal is 70. And look at this. Uranium is 1 billion. 
Why do you think we use nuclear power plants then? I mean, although they have their challenges, of course, but this is why, because just the energy density is just out of this world compared to other sources of energy. Um, so although it's not necessarily a clean and renewable source of energy, it gives you a lot of energy per every uh, meter cubed. Now, this one here is a, a nice little comment from XKCD. Now, here he looks at energy density in megajoules per uh, kilogram. So he's doing a slightly different kind of here where he's doing it divided by kilograms. So the numbers don't match. But same idea like sugar, coal, fat, gasoline, uranium. <laughs> it locks scales over quitters. <laughs> it's just because it's so, so, so much. But that's actually why we use uh, nuclear power plants. Even though they may not be perfect, they certainly have a lot more energy density.